tape. Okay, um, so the tape is rolling. Um, uh, someone last time uh, on the attendance on Zoom, uh, on the Zoom report I get, um, I got, I, uh, uh, you were listed there by your, uh, I guess it's your cell phone number. <laughs> So, so I don't, and I don't know your name. So, so I haven't counted your attendance. So, the last four digits though are three three zero four. Does that sound familiar to someone? Could be someone in class. It was on Zoom last time. Anyone out there in Zoom world? Last four digits. Me. Who? Pooja. Yeah, it was me. Oh, okay. But I got you. So, you must have logged in more than once. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, I got it. I already had you. So we're safe. All right, good. So uh, maybe I'll remind you to, yeah, do that in a minute. All right, guys. So uh, welcome to class. Uh, uh, I um, I slightly delayed some things here uh, just to uh, uh, make things more comfortable for uh, test number one. So if you can barely see that announcement there. <laughs> There's an announcement on the. Web assigned page, it says uh, test number one is postponed until uh, Monday, February 28th. We're actually finishing the, I think finishing the material today. So we could have done it on Wednesday, but I'd rather just give us another day to make sure that we have time to finish the homework. So, um, uh, so test number one will be February 28th instead of February 23rd. Uh, probably this afternoon, I will go ahead and um, go ahead and post the answer to the sample. I think I have those, but um, I haven't posted those yet, but do not look at the sample test answers until you have had a chance to look at the sample test, okay? So try doing that first blank, right, okay? And then look at the answers, because if you're looking at the answer simultaneously to looking at the problem, um, you get overconfident that way. You think, um, that because you see my solution and you think, oh yeah, okay, I understand that, that looks easy. But then when you have to do it yourself, it's different, right? So. Um, so try to do the test uh, from scratch um, uh, and then go back and compare your answer with what's on there, okay? Because um, that will be a more effective way of preparing for the uh, test. Uh, this homework that was due uh, uh, today, I, I, I slightly shifted those back. So, so there's a slightly new homework schedule. So there's lines is due Saturday now um, and, and then so forth, okay? Uh, have been moved around um, a little bit. So um, so pay attention to uh, those dates, right? Um, uh, okay, uh, are there questions on uh, anything, but in particular lines? Uh, we still, so we, because we don't have another chance to answer questions about that. So we'll have to, uh, you ask me now or you'll have to email me. Um, I will be uh, out of town. So uh, this weekend, so um, I will have my computer with me, so, but I'm not sure how fast I can respond, but anyway, um, questions about the lines? <clears throat> All right, so, uh, well, so uh, if you haven't started working on it, start working on it now, okay, uh, so you can finish it by, um, uh, so you can finish that by Saturday, okay? Uh, so Kevin said you had a question. Uh, you're going to email that to me, or is that about something else, Kevin? Uh, Mr. <laughs> All right, so Mr. McIntosh, it's a question, a homework question. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to give you. I'm going to pass out some uh, uh, something to the class, and then I'll show it for the people on Zoom where you can find this. Uh, it's also on the Blackboard page. Um, well, no, no. Let's wait on that. Um, I, let's go ahead and do our recall practice first, and then I'll pass out what it was that I was going to uh, uh, that I was going to pass out. But it is posted on the uh, it is posted on the Blackboard page, so um, so you can find it also uh, if you don't. I get a paper copy today. Uh, if you come to class later, uh, you can get a paper copy. I'll I'll still have these uh, with me uh, in my backpack right now. Uh, there it is. All right. So there's the recall practice. So they're pretty easy here. You will need a calculator though. Okay. So a calculator will be handy. Um, 
Uh, so uh, this is just converting from degrees to radians and vice versa. So seeing if you can remember that formula that we used last time at the end of class for doing these conversions, right? So in A, that's obviously degrees, about 800, that's 80 degrees. And then the second one, uh, minus seven, because that doesn't have a, a, a unit of measure, right? Indicated that's by default, that's gonna be radians. All right, so they're minus seven radians back to uh, degrees, okay? So uh, if you don't recall those formulas then look them up in your notes somewhere, all right? And, um, and make those conversions. And uh, again, you'll need a, um, a calculator, especially for the second one. You really don't have to worry about simplifying the first one. Uh, 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 so you can leave that in exact form, uh, but this one probably you want to give a, an approximation, right? Okay, so a calculator would be handy there uh, in B. All right, I'll give everyone a couple of minutes there. find their, those conversion formulas. These conversion formulas now you, are important to uh, just memorize these. Uh, you can write them on your survival card, but um, I think it would be good for these formulas just to remember them uh, and not rely on uh, a survival card. Don't have to memorize everything in the class, but some things are uh, 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 so uh, 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 frequently used that it's better just to commit them to memory. Yes. Yes, that's minus seven radians, right? Okay, that's the unit of measure not indicated there. So, uh, so you're just going to assume it's radians, okay? But in the first one, it's got specifically degrees, right? So you know that's degrees. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> let's try that first one. Ahmad has an answer for us. So let's see if let's see if people agree with. Um, Ahmad's answer there. So converting uh, degrees here to um, a, a radians, all you just have to remember there is the conversion formula, right? And that's just a, 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 this uh, factor that you multiply by, right? And so what is it in converting uh, degrees to uh, radians? I'm lowering the screen. Yeah, pi over 180, right, okay? And uh, so we'll just multiply the 80 uh, uh, by pi over. Uh, 180. Okay. And uh, when you get your answer, you can, since you're converting to radians, you know, you're going to drop the unit of measure, right? So you'll just write a pure uh, number here uh, uh, as the answer. So uh, you don't really have to, uh, again, as I mentioned, you can leave this in exact form. You could probably simplify this a little bit, though, uh, since 80 over 180 will reduce. Okay. But, but that is an answer 80 pi over 180. Uh, but let's see, um, uh, let's see if we can reduce 80 over 180. I guess 10 goes into both of those numbers, right? So you would get um, uh, one reduction would be 8 pi over 18, but that's going to reduce even further, right? Uh, because um, 2 goes into both of these, right? So we end up with um, uh, 4 pi over 9, right? 4 9 pi. And so you can leave it uh, like that. Okay, that's fine. Remember, often, right? In uh, uh, in uh, a radian measure, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the value will involve pi, correct? Okay. So since you're starting with degrees, uh, and you want to uh, introduce pi into the radian measure, that's why you multiply by pi over uh, 180. Okay, um, because you'll end up there in your answer with pi, right? Okay. Uh, now on the other hand, here we're converting. Um, uh, uh, in the second one, uh, uh, we're converting uh, uh, from radians back to degrees. So it's just the reciprocal, right? You multiply by 180 over pi, okay? So, um, so you just have to remember this, uh, the, these easy factors, right, in the conversion, and then just remember, you know, when to use which one. So um, now here, here's where uh, uh, um, a calculator really would be helpful to us, right, okay? 
So we have uh, uh, minus seven times 180. What now? 1260? Yeah, that sounds right. So, and so minus 1260 over pi. So there's the exact answer, minus 1260 over pi radians degrees. Okay, right? But uh, that's an awkward way of expressing degrees, right? So, um, uh, so here we really would be helpful to uh, use a calculator to get an approximation for uh, this number. So on your calculator, you just have to take 1260 uh, and divide it by pi and then round it off to whatever number of uh, decimal places you need, right? Uh, probably for degrees, we can just round it off to a whole number. So uh, what is that rounded off to a whole number? What's 1260 over uh, pi? Uh, Ahmad says what, four, 401? Okay, all right. Uh, if I round that off to the whole a whole number of degrees, uh, minus uh, 400 degrees, okay? And now that makes it much easier to understand what that angle is, right? Okay, then looking at uh, 1260 over pi, right? Um, let's sketch these angles um, while we're, uh, uh, while we're uh, thinking about it because uh, sketching angles is something that we have to do all the time in the class. So you have to, uh, you, you have to sort of get skilled at doing this quickly. Uh, you, you don't have to be super precise, all right, okay? Uh, when I say sketch the angle, I mean usually sketch it kind of roughly. Now, uh, of course, you can sketch angles in all sorts of different positions, right? So we're gonna, uh, usually when we sketch an angle, we'll sketch it in what's called standard position. And that means that we're gonna take the initial side of the angle and lay it along the positive side of the x-axis, all right? So I've drawn a, a, a rectangular coordinate system here. Of course, when you're drawing angles, you don't have to have a coordinate system to draw the angles on, uh, but, I, but, but uh, 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 <laughs> practice, that's what we're gonna do. So I just put a, a, a rectangular coordinate system here, and then the initial side of this angle, I'm gonna draw it on the positive side of the x-axis. So there's a side of the angle here on the positive side of the, x-axis. And then the terminal side, well, it's going to be 80 degrees away, right? So this is a positive angle. So we're opening the angle up in uh, a counterclockwise uh, 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 manner, right? And 80 degrees is a little bit short of 90 degrees. And remember, 90 degrees is a right angle. So, uh, so that would be the y-axis would be 90 degrees. So we're going to be a little bit short of that, right? Maybe like this, okay? And again, we're just sketching. So um, so, you know, you don't have to make it, uh, you know, super precise or anything. Let me go ahead and just draw an arrow here just to indicate that we're opening that angle in the uh, positive direction, right? Okay. Because, of course, we could open the angle in the negative direction, um, but that would no longer be 80 degrees. So there's our, there's our nice 80 degree angle, which is 4 pi over 9 in radians. Now, uh, for the second one, sketching that, let's see, it really is helpful to convert that to degrees, right? Because this is going to be difficult to, to sketch, right? In radians, who knows what minus seven radians is, right? Yeah, I, not easy to sketch that. So, uh, but in degrees, it's much easier. So, uh, so let's sketch this one. Um, so again, the initial side of the angle we're going to take as the positive side of the x-axis, right? That's just by default. Uh, again, that's called standard position. And now this angle is negative, so that means it's opening uh, counter, uh, uh, sorry, clockwise, right? So, um, so we start drawing this angle, and uh, but uh, 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 this angle is again in the clockwise direction we draw it. But that minus uh, four hundred and one—that's already more than one revolution, right? Okay, because uh, one revolution would be minus three hundred and sixty degrees. So you've gone one full revolution plus a little bit more, right? about 41 degrees more. So um, that would put us like halfway into the fourth quadrant, correct? So about right here. I say halfway because halfway into the uh, fourth quadrant would be minus 45 degrees, but this is only minus 41 degrees into the fourth quadrant, right? 41 degrees past one rotation of 360. So there is minus 401 uh, degrees or uh, 12, 60, or, or minus seven radians, right? Okay, uh, looks something like this. All right. Um, so let's practice that some more, actually. So I'm going to let y'all now draw some uh, 
I'm gonna let y'all now draw some angles for me. And this will this helps a little bit with you just getting skill drawing angles. Not that that's so complicated, but it's something we do frequently. And um, students often continue to have trouble with this skill, but it's really important. And also give you a little bit more practice with radians, okay? Because all of these angles that we're gonna draw, they're all measured in radians. And so, uh, Sometimes you can just draw the angle uh, without converting it to degrees, uh, especially for common uh, 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 radian angle measures like pi over four, right? But then in others, it will really help to convert them to uh, uh, degrees. But uh, you'll do this frequently that uh, you'll start getting better at uh, sketching and understanding angles and radians without converting them to degrees. But sometimes it's just essential to uh, convert them to degrees. Let's start with this first one, pi over four. So when you convert, uh, so let's convert this to degrees. So uh, uh, when you convert a uh, pi over four to degrees, right? Uh, you multiply by what? 180 over pi, correct? And I think we did this last time. And um, and the pi's divide out and uh, you end up with 80, 180 over four, which is 45. So uh, pi over four radians is 45. Uh, degrees. That makes it really easy to sketch then, right? Okay. So if we put it in standard position, so the initial side along the x-axis, then you open up 45 degrees. 45 degrees is a line like this, okay, <laughs> right? Exactly halfway through the uh, first quadrant is uh, 45 degrees. So, um, so there's our angle pi over uh, four, okay? I named here theta, which is going to be our favorite name for uh, angles. So one thing to remember is um, pi over four radians is 45 degrees. Uh, that's one thing you'll just want to memorize if you hadn't memorized it already. Okay, pi over four is uh, 45 degrees. And there are certain other common uh, 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 angles. They're called special angles that you also should. Uh, uh, Memorize their gradient measure and their degree measure, okay? So you don't have to be constantly making the conversion. Just memorize these special angles. These are angles that we use frequently. So pi over four is one of them, 45 degrees. Obviously, that's an angle that is going to occur frequently, right? Okay. Um, another one is pi over six, slightly smaller than 45 uh, uh, degrees. And this is 30 degrees. Uh, so 30 degrees is another angle that we use frequently. So um, uh, uh, that's pi over six in radians. Um, of course, zero radians is zero degrees. <laughs> so that's easy. Um, another one that, another special angle that we use a lot is pi over three, okay? And um, that is 60 degrees. And then um, the one that's coming up next here is pi over two radians, which is 90 degrees. So those are kind of the uh, uh, basic special uh, angles, special just in the sense that they're frequently used, that you should memorize their, um, their degree uh, equivalents and vice versa. So if you have a 30, uh, if you have 30 degrees or 45 degrees or 60 degrees, remember uh, uh, just by memory how to convert those two radians, okay? And that will make your life much easier, both in this class and in calculus, especially, okay? Because your calculus instructor is going to assume that you have perfect facility, okay, right? Okay? They're going to assume you know perfectly uh, special angles like pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, and their uh, degree measurements, okay? And they're just gonna assume that you, know, you can do that easily. All right, so, and so they're not going to spend any time uh, or very little time reviewing that. They're just going to, you know, start using that and expect you to, to know it. Um, all right, so, well, let's sketch pi over two then, right? So I already mentioned that's 90 degrees. So that's easy to sketch, right? Um, you just, uh, it's just a 90 degree angle. So in sketching it, you really can't see it because the uh, terminal side is going to be on the Y axis, right? <laughs> okay, and again, we're going to sketch these so that the initial side is always along the positive side of the x-axis. So here's pi over two, um, just looks like that.
What about pi then? Okay, now that's, see, I didn't have that in the, uh, I didn't have that in my list, right? But now uh, that I wrote down, but pi over two now is easy to understand, right? I'm sorry, pi is easy to understand now, right? Because pi would be twice pi over two, right? Okay, so uh, to get to pi radians, you would go pi over two radians, which brings you back to the y axis, right? And then you would go another pi over two radians. So where would that bring you? Yeah, to 180 degrees, right? Or back to the x axis, okay? So uh, here's the angle pi, which now you can see easily, right, is the same as 180 uh, degrees, right? Because that's twice pi over two, which you know is 90 degrees. All right, now I'm gonna let you try some, okay? And these are a little bit more um, exotic, all right? So I want you to try sketching. Does anybody need any graph paper again? So you guys at home as well, if I need a, a graph paper, we wanna sketch these in standard position, all right? And so uh, I want you to try minus three pi over four. So notice that's negative, right? And then also seven pi over six, of course, that's positive. Now, you can do this a, a couple of ways, okay? So if you want to convert it to degrees first, that's fine, okay? So use your conversion formula, which is you'd multiply by what? 180 over pi, and then the pi's will divide out, and you'll just have some uh, degree measure, right? So you can do it that way. That's fine. And then sketch the degrees. Or you might try thinking about um, how is 3 pi over 4? related to one of my special angles, right? Or how is seven pi over six related to one of my uh, special angles, okay? That would be a little bit more sophisticated way of drawing it um, without converting it to degrees first, okay? But if you wanna convert it to degrees, that's fine. All right, so you guys at home, right? Try that too, right? Try sketching these two angles in standard position. So the initial side is along the x-axis. I'm going to go around the class and watch people. This is about what you but, but you really know it precisely. Thank you. 
There it is. Okay, let's, uh, all right, so let's try drawing these, okay? Uh, so I saw what everyone was doing in class, so they're pretty good. All right, but you knew, you know a little bit more than what you were incorporating into your drawing sometimes, okay? So, um, uh, so uh, let, let's try converting this one to degrees first. Uh, and then, because most people are more comfortable doing that. So uh, if we take this and multiply it by um, uh, the 180 over pi, right? Then we get in degrees that reduces to what? Is it minus 135? Yeah, if I skip the arithmetic. So we have minus 135 degrees, right? Okay. So uh, again, if we put the initial side here along the x-axis, when we draw this, we're going to go in the clockwise direction. So let's just start drawing it. So we come to here, and when we've traveled there to the y-axis, how far have we gone in degrees? Yeah, that's minus 90, right? So we're going to go a little bit more beyond the 90, right? Because uh, beyond the minus 90, because we want to go to minus 135, but we don't want to come all the way up here because if we come all the way back to the x-axis, we would have gone how far? Minus 180, right, okay? So, uh, so we're going to end up in the third quadrant, correct? Actually, uh, we're going to end up 45 degrees into the third quadrant, right? Because 135 minus 135 is 45 degrees beyond minus 90, right? So you're going to go into the third quadrant, 45 extra degrees. But you know, 45 degrees is exactly this line that splits the third quadrant in two, right? <laughs> okay. So you're going to go 45 degrees into the uh, third quadrant. So altogether, this is minus 135 degrees. This piece is minus 90, right? And this piece is this little piece from the y-axis up. To the end of, to the terminal side of the angle that is minus 45 uh, degrees this piece okay um, now how could we have drawn that without actually converting it well just you have to remember hmm this involves a, a, a denominator four right okay specifically it involves pi over four and you can recall pi over four was how much 45 degrees so you can think hmm I have pi over four here three times, right? Because this is a uh, three pi over four. So I'm just gonna draw pi over four three times, but make sure you go in the negative direction. So pi over four, first time is here, right? Second time is here. Third time brings us up there, right? Okay. So you could draw that without actually converting it to uh, degrees. Well, you sort of converting it to degrees because you're remembering that power over four was 45 degrees, right? But you don't actually have to physically uh, do the computations. All right. What about on the second one, seven pi over six? So if we convert that to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi, that comes out to be what, 210? All right. So that's not so bad. At least it's positive. So again, let's think about drawing that. So just start at the x axis, right? And think about rotating the x-axis. That's the initial side of the angle. Just think about start rotating that in the counterclockwise direction. How much rotation have we done? Well, if we rotate to here, that's what? 90. If we rotate to here, that's 180, right? So we're almost to 210. We have to go a little bit more. How much? Additional 30, right? So not quite halfway through the third quadrant, right? 30 degrees would be a little bit short of halfway through the... Uh, third quadrant, maybe something like this. Okay, you know, for a rough sketch. That's um, 
210 uh, degrees. Now, again, if you wanted to try that without, um, if you wanted to try doing that without um, converting to degrees, this involves pi over six, right? Okay, and you have seven of those pi over six angles. So, uh, so we just have to uh, count off pi over six seven times. But we recall pi over six is how much? 30. So let's see if we can count off seven times. We would go what? Pi over six, right? Two pi over six, three pi over six brings us here. Four pi over six, five pi over six, six pi over six is here. And then seven pi over six would be another 30. That's right. All right, well, let's try another one. See if I have another one. Oh, okay. So minus four pi, that should be pretty easy. Minus four pi. See, in, in uh, trigonometry, you can have, you know, all sorts of <laughs> crazy angles, right? Okay. Minus four pi and then minus five pi over three. All right. So. Try your hand at drawing those, and probably naturally, you'll also be converting those to degrees, but you don't really have to. When you draw your picture, put the um, Try to include the rotation in the picture like this, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, try to include that in the picture. That will help you uh, understand the angle better, especially with minus four pi. If you draw a minus four pi without showing the rotation, um, it comes out looking kind of meaningless. That was hard. So, and 
sure you start from the x axis though and you're fine. Okay, most people made uh, uh, got pretty pretty far into it. They might be might still be working on the second one. All right, let's start the first one. So uh, I want someone on Zoom there to explain to me. Um, I can't, of course, I can't see your picture, right? But uh, I want you to explain to me how to actually draw the correct picture here for minus four pi. What process did you? Uh, what process did you go through? All right. So someone, someone volunteer here for me. Well, I got to talk though. I Go ahead. Who is that? Hannah. Hannah. Oh, hi, Hannah. Hi. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got negative thirty degrees. Um, and that what now? Negative thirty degrees. Minus thirty degrees for the minus four pi. Yes. All right. So, so what did you do, Hannah? Um, I went clockwise. Uh, thirty negative thirty degrees. It's not a full ninety. Uh, I'm not a full right triangle going clockwise. I kind of went a little. But wait, let's back up again. I'm, the 30 is what I'm wondering about. So how did you make that conversion from four pi? What do you multiply by here? Um, put a four pi. To convert that radius. Oh, my, my calculator. Let's see what I have put. But but just in general, what do you multiply by when you're converting radians to degrees? What's that factor you multiply by, yeah. Hannah? 180. Over 180 over what? Pi. Pi. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. Now, so now let's try, let's try doing this. So when you multiply these things together, what's going to happen to the pi's, Hannah? No, it cancel out. They'll cancel. So you end up with four times or minus four times 180. So that's what you would want to punch into your calculator. What's minus four times 180? Negative four times 180 is yeah. 720. Ah, there we go. So it's 720 degrees. You said 30 okay. degrees, but it's really much larger. It's 700, 720. Okay. You see that? Yes. Okay. Well, all right. But uh, all right. So, but now you're going to show me how to draw the minus seven twenty because, um, because you were saying that properly. So we're going in. We're starting at the x axis. X axis is going in which direction? Clockwise. Clockwise. Right. So if I go to here, I've gone how much? Ninety. Ninety. So up to here would be. One eighty. One eighty. Up to here would be. Uh, What's 180 plus 90? 90, yeah, 270. 270, and then back to here would be what? Uh, that's plus 90 again, correct? Yeah, uh-huh. It'd be 360. Yeah, so one that's one revolution, in other words, is 360, right? Okay, so you know that one revolution is 360 degrees. But 720 is two times 360 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to go another revolution, revolution right? Uh-huh to get to 720. So that brings you all the way back to the x-axis again. So that's what minus 720 looks like. It's two revolutions in that clockwise direction, right? Because one revolution is 360 and, um, and 720 is twice 360. Another way, another way of looking at this without making the conversion to degrees is to think that one revolution is two pi. Remember, one revolution is two pi radians. So you have four pi radians here. So you're going to make two full revolutions, right? One revolution is two pi. And then the second revolution would be four pi, another two pi. And that would bring you up to the four pi, except you're going in the, since this is negative, like you said, you're going in the uh, clockwise direction. All right, let's try. Let's try. Does that make sense now, Hannah? Yes. Okay. Let, all right. Let's try the second one now again. So someone on Zoom there, uh, a volunteer for me here. What did you do 
for minus five pi over three, okay? Uh, just explain what, um, what process you used uh, to figure out how to draw that angle. So Hannah's talked to me, I need someone else to, need someone else to volunteer for me or I'm gonna volunteer someone. Uh, I got negative 30 degrees, I mean, negative 300 degrees. Negative 300 degrees, yes. right? Who's, who's, I'm sorry, I can't see who's talking there. Uh, Giselle. Giselle, all right, so you got um, a, a minus 300 degrees, which is correct, right? Uh, you <laughs> multiplied by um, uh, 180 over pi and then uh, reduced all of that. And indeed that comes out to be minus 300 degrees. So if we can think about drawing uh, minus 300 degrees, then we're in great shape. Giselle, how, did you, how would you think about drawing that? Uh, I started right there. Uh huh. And then I went the 90 degrees first. Yeah, in which direction? Uh, counterclockwise. Uh, yeah, clockwise. Oh, clockwise, sorry. Yeah, yes. right, okay, right. So, the, and then, because this is negative, so we yes. go clockwise. So that's minus 90. And then keep going. So that's what? Uh, 180. 180. And then up to here is? 270. So, yeah. So we have to go a little bit further, right? How much uh -huh. further? Uh, like 30 degrees. Yeah. Just 30 degrees more, right? Which is just a, a little bit into the first quadrant, right? Yes. So ended up right there. Did you draw a picture like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's minus 300. Uh, same as minus five pi over three. This is harder to think about in radians. Uh, pi over three is a little bit more awkward uh, to think about uh, in radians, but you can think about this in radians. Uh, remember, pi over three is the same as 60 degrees, right? Okay, so uh, if, we, if we think, so we've got five of those pi over three radians in this angle. So we go pi over three, that's 60 degrees, and then we go another uh, a pi over three, that would bring us into the third quadrant. And then the third pi over three would bring us into, uh, bring us back to the x-axis. And then another pi over three, four pi over three brings us a further 60 degrees. So that's somewhere up here. And then uh, finally the last pi over three would bring us into the first quadrant. So altogether, this is uh, five pi over three. That's a little bit harder to see than uh, 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 drawing that uh, than um, some of the other angles in radians. Um, another way you may think about is five pi over three is almost six pi over three, right? Five pi over three is almost six pi over three. Six pi over three is two pi though. So six pi over three would be one full revolution we are just pi over three short of that. This is pi over three. So we're pi over three short of um, one revolution, 60 degrees short of one full uh, revolution. Um, okay. Good, all right. Now I've got a little another another little exercise for you here, okay? I'll do a, a, some, I'll do a little bit of it and then, uh, let y'all do the last one. So um, uh, now just a little bit more terminology first. So uh, if you have angles in standard position, so that means that their initial side is along the positive side of the x-axis, then uh, uh, if you have two angles in standard position, then they're said to be coterminal, coterminal if their terminal sides coincide, okay? So uh, you can have different angles uh, uh, different angles with different measures where the terminal sides coincide, right? Okay, but they're really different angles. The, when I say uh, the terminal side coincides, that means the terminal side of the angle overlays, uh, the terminal sides of these angles lay exactly over each other, all right? So here's what we want to practice here. Um, I want you to find an angle between zero and 360 that is coterminal with this big angle. So do you understand the question? You're given this big angle that's uh, 1290 degrees. We're gonna draw this one in uh, just a second here, all right? But um, I wanna find a smaller angle, one that's just between zero and 360 that 
really looks like this angle, okay? In other words, the terminal side of the angle is the same as the terminal side of 1290. Let me, let me show you what I mean here, okay? So first let's try drawing 1290 degrees. Wow, what is 1290 degrees, man? Um, so that's gonna have a lot of revolutions in it, right? Because one revolution is what, uh, 360? So let's see. So we go one time, that's 360. And then we go another time, that brings us to 720. Can I go another time? What's 720 plus 360? 1080? Okay, all right. So, all right. so there, there's three revolutions. That's already uh, 1080. And so what's left there? Wow. All right, let, let, let's write it down. So I've, uh, I have 1290 is, is my angle, but here I've already drawn three revolutions, which is 1080, y'all told me. So what's left from my original angle and the three revolutions? Is that 210? Yeah. So in other words, from here, I need to go another 210 degrees, right? I think we drew 210 a moment ago, right? Uh, this is 90. This is 180. So to get to that additional 210, you go another 30 degrees right here. Yeah, so you get this, wow, this big um, angle that almost hypnotizes you, right? Okay, because of the spirals in it. So you look at that and you get dizzy or something, right? Um, that altogether is... 1290 degrees. Three revolutions plus an extra 210. What's this little piece right here between the x axis and the terminal side? How far did we have to go here? 30. Yeah, this little piece was 30 degrees, right? Okay. So, see, that's a big complicated angle because it has all of those uh, revolutions in it, right? So essentially what we're asking is find another angle that looks like this one. It's got the same initial and terminal side, but it's only between zero and 360, right? In other words, try to cut down the size of this angle, right? Find another angle that looks like this one, exactly like this one, but it's not as large as this one, right? So what's an angle between zero and 360 that looks just the same as this angle? In other words, it's got the same initial and the same terminal side. 210, right, okay? The answer there is just 210, correct, okay? If you just drew 210, you would see the same picture, right? You would have the same initial side and the same terminal side, but you wouldn't have all of those intervening revolutions, correct, okay? Uh, yeah, 210 in radians is seven pi over six, exactly. I have no idea what this one is in uh, uh, radians. It's six pi plus seven pi over six, whatever. Okay, um, 43 pi over six, something like that. Okay, so you get the idea? So when you're uh, in this problem, we're really trying to cut down on the size of an angle. We have a large angle and we're trying to find a smaller angle that looks like it, but just uh, is not as uh, large. So 25 pi over six, my God, where's 25 pi over six? So, um, wow, let's see if we can... Shall we convert that to degrees? I give up. Let's convert that to degrees. Okay. It's what? 750? I was going to try to draw that without converting to degrees, but that was just too much trouble. So, uh, uh, so Emil, you're saying uh, this uh, computation turns out to be seven, what, 50? Uh, okay. So now that's much easier to understand, right? Uh, because 750 degrees will have what? Uh, one revolution in it, right? Plus what? 30 more. So you go up just 30 degrees into the, just 30 degrees into the first quadrant, right? So there's 750. So what's a smaller angle, an angle between zero and 360 that looks like this one? 30, right, okay. 30 has the same initial and terminal sides, right? Just 30 degrees, this piece right here would have the same initial and um, terminal side, right? You're just cutting out that extra uh, revolution.
All right, I want you to try this one. Minus 11 pi over four. So that's a negative angle. I want a positive angle that looks like this one. Has the same initial and terminal side, okay? But I want it to be positive. So this angle is negative. We're gonna convert it to, in a sense, we're gonna make this angle positive. So there's a, it helps to sketch, okay? I mean, theoretically, you don't have to sketch this one to write down the answer, but definitely helps to sketch it first. What does minus 11 power four, four look like? Then that makes it easy to see what's a positive angle that is the same as minus 11 pi over four. Looks the same as minus 11 pi over four. So you guys try that at home. I'll draw that, draw this one first. Draw this one. Okay. That will give you
All right. Okay, that one's kind of informative watching uh, watching you work on that one. So we have minus 11 pi over four. Uh, so uh, uh, rather than try to uh, 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 tease that out in radians, let's go ahead and convert this to degrees. So when you convert this to degrees, what'd y'all get when you convert it to degrees? Minus 495, right? Uh, degrees, all right? So maybe that's easier to think of. Uh, minus 495, although that's a big angle, right? And so, see, the point is, uh, uh, we'd like to reduce that to uh, uh, an angle that's uh, that looks the same, but it's easier to work with, right? Somehow the numbers are are simpler, okay? Uh, this is a, a, a skill that will be useful to us. So, but let's draw the minus 495. So uh, we're drawing in the negative direction, right? So I'm starting this way. And minus 495 already includes minus 360, right? So, um, so we have one full revolution, and then it would be 135 more, right? Uh, uh, 360 to 495 is 135, correct? So you have to go 135 more degrees in the negative direction. So if you go here, that would be another 90. So that leaves you with 45 more, right? Okay. And well, you know what 45 looks like, right? That's gonna bring you right halfway through the right halfway through the third quadrant, right? So our angle minus 495 looks like this. So see, that's kind of a big number and kind of an ugly angle because it has a full revolution in it. So we would like to again find an angle that looks like this one, meaning that it has the same initial and terminal side, but it has an easier measure. Okay, right, then, then this ugly number. So that's why we're looking for something between zero and 360, zero and one revolution, right, but has the same initial and terminal side. So let's think about starting on the x-axis and then just drawing in the positive direction till we get to uh, that terminal side, right? So we rotate, that is what, 90, right? And then we have to go more. So we go to here, that's what? And then we have to go to here, how much more is that that we have to add on? That's 45, right? Because you knew this piece was 45, correct? Or, or actually, technically, uh, that little piece here was minus 45. So this additional uh, uh, rotation is 45 uh, degrees, right? So let's see how much I've lost track. So it was 90, 180, plus an additional 45 brings us to what? 225, right? So this positive angle is 225 degrees. Well, that's still uh, kind of a big angle, right? But at least it's positive and it's not quite as large as uh, um, uh, minus 495, correct? Okay. All right. Now, before we start, uh, the, uh, now we're th really through talking about angle measure. Again, it's not, as I mentioned when we uh, started, it's not a complicated <laughs> idea, right? Okay. Uh, 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 it's pretty simple to understand uh, the, the measure of angles, uh, except that radian measure is a little bit uh, clumsy for us, right? Uh, especially at first. Uh, now we're going to start applying our knowledge of angle measures. I'm going to start with just a simple, a famous, uh, 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 two simple famous formulas from geometry, but these are not really what we're aiming for, okay? All right, um, uh, but they're included in this section, so I want to mention them anyway. Um, so I've covered up the picture. This first formula shows you how to measure the length of an arc along a circle, okay? And then if you rewrite the formula, it also can show you how to measure an angle that's inscribed in a circle, okay? Inscribed means that the vertex of the angle is in the center of the circle, like we have in this picture. So in this picture, we have this angle theta. Remember, that's the Greek letter theta, that zero with a, a line through it there. 
And it, when I say it's inscribed in the circle, that means that the vertex of the angle is right there at the center of the circle, right? And uh, of course, when you draw that angle inscribed in the circle, well, the circle has a radius to it, obviously, okay, right? And then, um, and then the, um, that angle is going to cut off an arc in the circle, okay? <clears throat> And so, uh, and so what we're, one of the things that we're often interested in measuring is what's the length of this arc, right? That's uh, cut off by that, um, um, that angle that's uh, inscribed in the circle. Um, here's a formula for doing that. It's a very simple formula, okay? So the length of that arc is just gonna be the radius of the circle times size of the angle. You just have to take the size of the angle times the radius of the circle, and that will give you the length of this arc, okay? Um, the angle must be measured in radians, though, okay? This formula only works when the angle is measured in radians, and so this is one example of why radian measure is useful to us, okay? Is it because it gives us this very simple formula for measuring the arc here cut off out of this circle uh, by this angle. Actually, now, be careful. You've got, uh, you actually have two arcs that are cut out of the circle by the angle, right? You've got this arc, and then you also have the arc on top, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, now, you can take this formula, and you can divide both sides by R, right? So in other words, you can solve the formula for theta. And notice this formula then would give you how to measure the size of the angle, okay? So if you had the angle inscribed in the circle and you knew the length of this arc and you knew the radius of the circle, then you could also write down the size of the angle. You just take the length of the arc and divide it by the radius of the circle. But again, that gives you the radian measure of the angle, all right? Not the degree measure of the angle, right? That gives you the radian measure uh, of the Let's practice with this just a little bit. So um, let's look at this example. And it just says estimate the size, but it does say in degrees of the angle in this picture. All right. Actually, we've got two angles in this picture. So um, we'll estimate both of them. They're just, they're just asking for uh, theta. Okay. So that's the easier one to start with. And then we'll also figure out the size of alpha. That's pretty easy once we figure out what uh, once we figure out what theta is, right? Okay. So um, so how do we uh, uh, decide uh, the size of theta? Remember the formula is s over r, right? Okay. So s is the length of the arc, right? Okay. That's uh, uh, cut off by the uh, angle. If you say that, you can also say that in a, the opposite direction. You can also say the arc subtends the angle. The word subtend, you don't hear that very often in conversation, right? Okay, but um, uh, uh, that is an English word. And we would say that this arc subtends this angle, okay? Uh, uh, again, it's just the, the arc that's formed from the angle inscribed in the circle. All right, so there's the length of the arc, there's the radius, but in this picture, let's see, what are these two quantities? So obvious, right? Uh, the arc is what? Five, because it just shows it to us, right? And the radius is supposed to be three. So there's the size of theta. It's just five over three. Remember, that's in radians, though. So it's five thirds radians. So if you want to convert that to degrees, right, you'll have to multiply by uh, uh, 180 over pi, correct? So let's do that. And uh, y'all give me an estimate for this in uh, degrees. So what's five thirds times pi over? 180. What now? Exactly? <laughs> Is that right? No, that can't be right. Oh. What now? Uh, so if you take five times, wait, let me write this out. I don't believe you. If you take five times 180, I think that's 900, right? Yeah. But you're dividing it not by three. You're dividing it by three pi. 
right? Okay. So, um, so actually, this is exactly this. But so, what is approximately with your calculator? Nine hundred divided by three pi. What now? Two eighty. I don't. Two eighty six point five. Oh no, that sounds no. Oh, that sounds better. What? Say that again now. Uh, Ninety five point five. Uh, okay. All right. So there we have. Uh, yeah. See, uh, three pi. You know, pi is about three point one four, right? So this denominator is going to be a little bit bigger than nine because you're multiplying three by pi, which is a little bit bigger than three, right? So you're taking 900 and dividing it by a number that's a little bit bigger than nine. So that's going to be close to 100, but a little bit below 100. See, that's like dividing 900 by nine, which is 100. How accurate is my picture? Not really very accurate because this is almost a right angle, right? And does my picture look like a right angle? No. Okay, so my picture is not drawn very, uh, <laughs> very carefully to scale there. Uh, how much is um, how much is alpha then? So that should be pretty easy because what's what's one full revolution? 360 or in radians, that's what? Two pi. Uh, so alpha is going to be the remainder if you take one full revolution and subtract off theta, right? So take the two pi and subtract off the theta, which is five thirds, and that would give you what's left is alpha, correct? Okay. Take one full revolution, subtract off theta, the remainder would be. Uh, alpha. So it's exactly in radians, two pi minus five thirds. Right, okay, that's the exact value. Uh, but what now? Well, uh, it depends on how you're using the angle, right? Okay, if you just want the exact size of the angle, in radians, that's it, two pi minus five thirds, okay? But, you know, if you're using this angle in practice for some reason, you'd probably want to know, um, you know, how big that is in degrees, right? Okay, so uh, this is approximately in degrees, what? 360 minus this, 95.5. So what does that work out to be? 364.5, yeah. 264, yeah. So can you all see that? 264.5 uh, degrees or alpha. Now in applying this formula, uh, here we were given the length of the arc that subtends the angle. That's the way you say that technically. The length of the arc that subtends the angle Here's the radius. So the arc subtends the angle. I always say the angle cuts off the arc, but there's probably a technical term um, for that. Um, but sometimes you might be given the angle and uh, uh, the radius or the angle and the length of the arc and ask a different question, all right? So, uh, so when you're reading the problem, be careful you understand what piece of information you're given okay, in this formula. Now, there's another formula that's, that comes from uh, uh, this first formula that's related to this first formula. And to me, this one is uh, uh, the one that's more useful because in this one, we'll get to measure an area, all right? So suppose that, again, you're working with a circle and you have an angle that's sub, that is inscribed in the circle, right? Like in this picture, of course. And then, of course, there's you know this arc, right? That's uh, cut off by the angle, just like in the prior picture. But in this formula, we're not trying to measure the length of this arc. We're trying to measure the area here that's swept out by the angle in the circle. Okay, so how big is this piece of the pi, all right, that is swept out by that, um, that angle? Of course, what's the area of the entire circle? 
remember the area for a circle formula? What now? It's pi r squared, right? It's pi r squared. So that's just, you know, uh, an elementary formula from geometry, right? The area of an entire circle is pi r squared, okay? But so this is a little bit more specialized formula. It says if you're only looking for some wedge of the circle, the area of just a wedge of the circle, not the entire circle, then you can compute that area using this formula, right? So you have to know the radius again, just like you do in the, the full area formula. But uh, instead of multiplying by pi, for some reason, you multiply by one half and then the size of the angle, right? Okay. Uh, make sure that's given in radians, though, right? Make sure that's given uh, radians. <laughs> so how do these how do these two formulas relate to each other? Let's think about that for a moment. Um, if you are, so let's use this formula to calculate the uh, area of the entire circle, which we know is going to be pi r squared, right? So if you were, uh, if you wanted to calculate the area of the entire circle, how big, how big would your angle be? 360, right. In radians, though, Amanda, that's what? 2 pi. Two pi. So you would take uh, uh, you would take one half times r squared times the full uh, rotation angle, right? Which is two pi in radians. And look what happens. The one halves and the twos cancel. And what do you end up with? Pi r squared, right? Okay. So you can see how those two formulas relate to each other. But if you want a smaller piece of the circle, then uh, uh, you get that little bit more complicated formula. Let's figure out the area of this circular sector. This is called a, a sector. I call it a wedge, but um, the book calls it a sector. All right, so I want the green sector here. Okay, so I don't want the white sector. That would be maybe a little bit easier to calculate, right? Okay, so um, hmm. how am I going to figure out the area of that green sector, this area? Not this part, but this part. Well, let's see. We need to fill in the values in this formula, right? So that should be pretty easy. The one half goes in there. What's the radius? That we can see is what? Three. So you have three squared here, right? And now I have to figure out the angle for this sector, which is not quite theta, right? Okay. So um, I need to figure out this, this angle, correct? That corresponds to the green sector, but I think we I think we figured that out a moment ago. What was that? Y'all have that in your notes? Didn't we just do that? Yeah, it's this angle alpha up here, right? Okay, but I need that in radian measure though, um, Amanda. So this was degree measure. What was it in radians? Wasn't it this? Wasn't that the exact value in radians? Two pi minus five thirds, right? Yes, okay. So that's what goes into my formula is it's a little bit more complicated. I have two pi minus five thirds. Oh, let's see what this, uh, let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. So um, three squared of course is nine times one half is nine halves, right? Three squared times one half is nine halves times two pi, Minus five thirds. All right, let's distribute the nine halves. So what happens here when you multiply nine halves times two pi? Uh, well, that's going to simplify a little bit, right? Because uh, what happens to the twos? They will cancel. And then I'll also have nine halves times five thirds. That will reduce a little bit also. So I get the twos canceling here. I get nine pi minus... And then, hmm, what happens here? What's nine halves times five thirds? Well, three goes into nine three times. So you end up with three times five over two, which is 15 halves. Well, there's your answer. So whatever this number is, that's the area of this green sector here, nine pi minus 15 halves. Now you can use your calculator to get a decimal uh, approximation at...
going to be around 20. Somebody? Someone give me that? 9 pi minus 15 halves? What now? So about 20.8 maybe, okay, roughly rounded off. Uh, remember now this is an area measure, so it's gonna be in square units, okay? Because that's an area. Okay, so you they, they throw the, the a couple of uh, 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 homework problems in that involve these two formulas uh, in the homework, and these are just famous formulas from geometry uh, that are useful sometimes. But this is not why we were studying angle measure, okay? <laughs> because what we what we want angle measure for, although those formulas are kind of interesting. What we want an angle measure for is to help us study right triangles, okay? So we have a much more important application of uh, uh, the measure of angles, and that is uh, the study of right triangles, which is called trigonometry, okay? So uh, that's what we're getting ready to dive into here, is, um, how right, uh, uh, studying right triangles and how uh, knowledge of right triangles is useful to us, okay? And we know it's useful because um, uh, uh, but as I mentioned last time, um, this has been studied since antiquity. So anything that's been studied since antiquity, that's before recorded history, you know that's important, okay? Or you know that's useful. Uh, all right, so let's take a break here. What time is it? We're a little bit past our break time, but that's all right. So let's take a break here till about um, 1130, and then we're going to dive into uh, the trigonometry of right triangles, which is easy and fun. So both of those things put together. Okay, so let's crank back up again. All right, so uh, as promised here, we're going to start uh, uh, studying more about right triangles. Well, uh, we've been using right triangles since, you know, the very first day of the class, right? Because right triangles are the basis of the Pythagorean theorem. And uh, we use the Pythagorean theorem for multiple things, I guess, but in particular for measuring distances, right, between... Uh, two points on a, a two-dimensional surface, right, on a, 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 a rectangular coordinate system. But now we're going to use uh, uh, right triangles again, but for a slightly different uh, purpose here. Um, so um, I'm going to I'm going to introduce here some um, uh, some extra notation, just a little bit, or some extra terminology, actually. So here's a here's a right triangle, obviously, okay. And uh, it's got this 90 degree angle embedded in it, indicated, you know, by that little block, right? Uh, at the angle. So that always indicates you have a 90 degree angle. And, um, and of course the, the side opposite the, uh, of the 90 degree angle is called the hypotenuse of the right triangle. You know, we usually denote that by the single letter C uh, in particular in the Pythagorean theorem, right? That's usually denoted by C. And then, you know, in the, um, in the Pythagorean theorem, uh, we often denote these other sides by A and B. But um, I'm going to give these other sides uh, actual names now, other than just variable names. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to choose here one angle out of the, uh, one of the acute angles out of the right triangle, not the right angle, right? But one of the acute angles out of the right triangle. I'm gonna pick that one to focus on. I could have chosen this one, but just in this picture, I, I, I chose to focus on this angle and I'm gonna give that the name theta, but that's just for reference purposes. So I could give that any, that angle, any name that I like. Uh, theta is just our favorite name for angles. And once you have chosen the angle, the acute angle you're going to focus on here, okay, uh, then uh, here's how we're going to label the other sides in the triangle. So, of course, the hypotenuse is still called the hypotenuse, but the side there that is uh, forms the angle theta, one of the sides will form the angle theta. One of the other sides, other than the hypotenuse, will help form the angle theta. That side we're going to call the adjacent side, okay? <laughs> Right, and then the side that doesn't touch theta, uh, we're going to call that the opposite side of theta. So 
notice here, the hypotenuse is independent of what you choose as theta, okay? But the adjacent and the opposite side depend on which of these two, uh, or which of these two acute angles choose to focus on. So had we chosen to focus on this angle instead, this would be the opposite side and this would be the adjacent side, all right, okay? But of course, the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. Um, so keep this terminology, uh, keep this uh, uh, terminology in mind. Now, once you have uh, uh, chosen which of the acute angles, did everyone sign? Once you've chosen which of the two acute angles you're gonna focus on, we're gonna form now some fractions, some ratios uh, based on that choice of uh, theta, okay? And these ratios are called the trigonometric ratios. There are six of them, but there's really three basic trig ratios and the, the other ratios are formed just by taking the reciprocal of the three basic ones, all right, okay? So in this top row here, can't really see all the top rows, so let me move some things out of the way here. So that top row there, those are the basic trig ratios, okay? So here's how they're formed. The, the, uh, the first one that I'm gonna mention, there's no particular order to these, uh, these uh, three basic trig ratios, but the first one I'm gonna mention here, this one is called the sine. Uh, it's usually abbreviated S-I-N, but the full word is sine, S-I-N-E, so you read that as sine, okay? And um, again, uh, 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 the way you form sine is you take the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? So the length of the side opposite theta divided by the hypotenuse, that, that uh, measurement, okay, that quantity is referred to as the sine. Now, notice that depends on what you chose as theta, okay? So you have to indicate that this is the sine uh, uh, based on our choice of theta, all right? So you read this off as, uh, sine of theta. Notice that the parentheses really don't have to be here, okay? The parentheses really don't have to be there, but uh, but you can insert them. So you can sort of uh, treat this like function notation and insert, insert parentheses around the uh, theta, okay? You usually don't spell out the whole, full word sine though, okay? Usually just abbreviate that as uh, S I N. Uh, again, the way you uh, uh, the way you calculate sine and theta, take the opposite, divide it by the hypotenuse. Okay, so remember, sine is a ratio, right, of two uh, numbers. Now, if you take the adjacent, the side adjacent to theta, and divide it by the hypotenuse, that ratio is called the cosine. All right, always abbreviated as C O S. Okay, and again, if you want to put parentheses around the theta, you can, but often that's just left off. All right. Now, the third possible ratio you could form here is, well, not the third, but the uh, third basic ratio that you could form here is take the opposite and divide it by the adjacent. So notice the hypotenuse is not involved. Take the opposite side, divide it by the adjacent side. That ratio is called the tangent, all right? Abbreviated always as T-A-N, okay? And again, uh, which side is opposite, which side is adjacent it depends on your choice of theta. So you have to indicate a uh, 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 theta uh, 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 when you're uh, computing any of these uh, three uh, basic trig ratios. Now, if you form the reciprocals, in other words, if you flip these ratios, you get the, what are called the reciprocal trig ratios, okay? So if you take the sine and you flip it, you get the cosecant. Sine inverted is cosecant. It's abbreviated CSC, but the full word is cosecant. So that's hypotenuse over opposite. Remember, cosecant is the uh, uh, inverse of the sine, the reciprocal of the sine. If you flip the cosine, in other words, if you take the hypotenuse and divide it by the adjacent, that's the secant, okay, abbreviated SEC. And then if you flip the tangent, you get what's called the cotangent, all right? That's adjacent divided by opposite. So what you really uh, uh, what you really are going to rem remember here, and this is going to be easy to uh, memorize because you're going to calculate these values a lot, okay, is the meaning of sine, that's opposite over hypotenuse, the meaning of cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, the meaning of tangent, that's opposite over adjacent, right? And then you just have to remember the names of the uh, uh, six of the three reciprocal uh, uh, trig ratios and how they're formed. So you need, you, you need to remember cosecant, Remember that is the 
reciprocal of the sine. Cosecant goes with sine. Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So secant goes with cosine. You're going to get confused. The easy thing to get confused is think that cosine goes with cosecant, but it doesn't. All right. Okay. When you flip the cosine, you get secant. When you flip the sine, you get cosecant. All right. However, it is true that the reciprocal of the tangent is the cotangent. Right. So try not to get confused on the terminology for the uh, reciprocal trig ratios. We don't use those as often, so that it's easy to uh, confuse them. Let's try an example here. So this is not an application here. We're just practicing with these um, computing these ratios, okay? With this terminology and computing these ratios. So here's a very simple uh, a right triangle. All right, it's got two angles in it, right? Okay, uh, I've labeled one of them theta and one of them uh, I label beta. And uh, there are the sides of this uh, simple right triangle. You can check that's a right triangle uh, by checking the Pythagorean theorem. Let's see, four squared plus three squared should be five squared. Is that true? This is 16 plus nine is... 25, which is five squared. Yeah, that works. So you know this is definitely a right triangle, all right? Because it fits the Pythagorean theorem. And what we want to do here is just calculate the six trig ratios. So sine, cosine, tangent, uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So easy to do here, right? In the picture, you just have to remember what is the hypotenuse, what's the opposite side, and what's the adjacent side. So obviously the hypotenuse here is five, correct, right? Because that's the side opposite the 90 degree angle the four is going to be, which one? Adjacent to theta, okay? Yeah, all right. And we're computing the ratios for theta, right? So four is the adjacent side for uh, theta. And then three is the opposite side for theta. So the sine of theta is what? Three over five, right? Okay, just that simple. Cosine is four over five, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. So three over four. And now once you've got those, you just start inverting them, right, to get the other three trig ratios. So remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of the what? sine, right, okay? Uh, it's the reciprocal of the sine. So once you know the sine, then it's easy to compute the cosecant. You just take the reciprocal. So flip the sine to get the cosecant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So you just flip the cosine to get the uh, secant. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So you just flip the tangent to get the cotangent. So that would be four. See, those are easy calculations, right? Very straightforward calculations. This is all really just a matter of memorizing, uh, you know, the names for the six trig ratios, right? And how they're formed, correct? Okay. The arithmetic is uh, uh, the easy part. Now, you can also calculate the trig ratios for beta, they're going to come out different, though, because for beta, the opposite and the adjacent will not be the same, right? Okay, so if I want to compute sine of beta here in this picture, then um, that would be what? Four over five, right? Because the opposite of beta is four, correct? And, but the hypotenuse stays the same as five, right? So cosine of beta is the adjacent side to beta, which is three, right, divided by five. And then finally, tangent of beta is the opposite over the adjacent, right? So for beta, the opposite is four and the adjacent is uh, Now, I want to point out in this example, in this example, um, the, 
the size of the uh, a triangle is immaterial. What's important here is that you have a right triangle and it's the size of the angles that make a difference. Here's what I mean. If you take these same two angles, theta and uh, beta here, and you, so we had them embedded in this triangle, right? Okay. But if you embed those same, same angles in a larger triangle, you're going to get the same calculations for sine, cosine, tangent, et cetera. All right. So look, uh, here's a larger angle. Here's a larger triangle, much larger triangle. See, the sides are much larger, but I have the same angles here, theta and beta, in this triangle that I have in this one. So notice that the sign will come out the same in, for theta. Sine of theta would be what here in this picture? 30 over 50, which is the same as the sign in this picture, right? In this picture, it's what? three over five, okay? So it looks like it's a different number, but it's not, okay? Cosine of theta, of course, would be 40 over 50. In this picture, comes out the same in this picture, right? And same thing for tangent. Of course, why is that true? So this is what, 30 over 40, which is the same as here. So why do these ratios come out the same in both, uh, in both triangles, even though the triangles are, have different sizes? Because they're similar triangles? What now, Fernando? Because they're similar triangles? Yeah, these are similar triangles, right? Okay. It's a similar triangle theorem again, right? Okay. If the remember, if the angles in two triangles are the same, those are called similar triangles, correct? Okay. So if these have if these triangles have the same angles, no matter how big or small the triangles are, if these uh, 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 triangles have the same angles, then they're similar triangles, which means that the ratios of corresponding sides are always equal, right? So if you take a, a three divided by four here, right, the opposite of theta divided by the adjacent, right, you're going to get the same ratio as you got here, right, okay, the opposite divided by the adjacent, right, 30 over 40 will be the same as three over four, um, or uh, 30 over 50 opposite over hypotenuse here be the same as uh, because that's the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse is the same as taking the opposite divided by the hypotenuse here, right? The three over five, or same thing for cosine. <clears throat> four over five here is the same as 40 over 50 here because these triangles are similar to one another. So it's just another application of the uh, similar triangle theorem. So what that tells you is that uh, if you know a particular size angle, right? Uh, if you have a particular uh, uh, size angle, then if you compute the sine or the cosine or the tangent or any of the trig ratios for that angle, they're all going to be the same no matter what triangle that angle is embedded in. Okay, is that you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so uh, this angle, by the way, uh, this theta. I can tell you is approximately 36.9 degrees. So theta here is approximately 36.9 degrees. How big is beta, by the way? If this is 36.9, how big would beta be? Remember, this is 90. So how big is uh, beta? Fifty-three point one degrees, approximately. So my point is that uh, 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 if you calculate the sine or the cosine or the tangent of theta, thirty-six point nine degrees, you are always going to get the same values. Okay, it doesn't matter what triangle you have theta embedded. In, okay, all right, because those triangles will always be similar triangles. Okay, uh, same thing for beta. If you compute the sine, cosine 
or tangent of 53.1 degrees, okay, that's always going to come out the same, no matter what uh, 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 triangle you have beta embedded in, okay? So when you're, when you, on your calculator, notice your calculator will compute sine, cosine, and tangent for you, correct, right? Your scientific calculator, is that all on your calculators, right? Okay, see, the calculator is not at all interested in what triangle the angle is embedded in, right? Okay, you just punch in the angle and you compute sine and the calculator gives you a value. That's because it doesn't matter, right? Okay, um, uh, the same angle will have the same sine uh, uh, in any triangle, okay? The same angle will have the same cosine triangle or the same tangent in any triangle, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent are really dependent on angle, right? They don't depend on the lengths of the sides of the triangle. Let's try another one here. So uh, let's do this backwards though, okay? So suppose we know, uh, uh, suppose we're given this, the cosine of alpha, so that's the Greek letter alpha. The cosine of alpha is three fourths. So your instruction here is hmm, sketch a right triangle. RT is just the vacation for right triangle. Uh, sketch a right triangle with this angle, alpha in it, and then find the other five trig ratios. So you know the cosine is three fourths. We want to find the other five trig ratios. Okay. So let's see if we can do that. So there I've drawn a really uh, uh, totally rough sketch of this uh, triangle that contains alpha. I have, no, I have no idea how big alpha is, but anyway, it's in this right triangle. There's alpha, okay? And we know that the cosine of alpha is three fourths. So if the cosine of alpha is three fourths, then um, hmm, how, what can I uh, 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 write down as the lengths of the sides of this uh, imaginary triangle that I've drawn here that contains alpha? Well, what is cosine again, remember? Over, so we can assume in this triangle that the adjacent is what? Three, and the hypotenuse is what? Four, right. Ah, so now you know, uh, uh, you can assume, right? Uh, what the links of these uh, uh, two sides are. But uh, you, if you wanted to, you could have put 30 and 40 here, correct, right? Because it wouldn't make a difference. 30 divided by 40 is still three-fourths, correct? Uh, or you could have put 300 over uh, uh, 400, right? Okay. Uh, if you like because 300 divided by 400 is still going to be three-fourths, right? Um, all right, but now, let, well, let's not complicate our lives then. So let's do, uh, let's assume these are three and four instead of these much larger numbers. And if that's the case, then what's the uh, opposite side going to be? So how do we compute uh, the opposite side? Let's call that B, the opposite side. So how do we find the length of B then? That's the Pythagorean theorem, sure, right, okay? So the Pythagorean theorem tells us what? If we take three squared, that's the adjacent squared, right? Plus the opposite side, which I'm calling B, right? That's equal to what? Four squared, right? So let's solve this for B now. So I get nine plus B squared is equal to 16. So it looks like B squared is equal to seven, which means B is kind of an awkward number, but there it is. It's square root of seven, right? So there is the value for uh, square root of seven. Oh, so now what are the other trig ratios? Cosine is three fourths. What sine of alpha? Square root of seven over four. So a little bit uglier number, right? But there it is. Uh, tangent of alpha? Square root of seven over three? Right. Okay. Now, the reciprocal ratios, cosecant of alpha?
4 over square root of 7. Remember, that's the reciprocal of sine, right? So you just flip the sine, 4 over square root of 7. Secant of alpha is the reciprocal of the cosine. So there's the cosine. What's its reciprocal? 4 thirds, right? And what's cotangent of alpha? Well, the reciprocal of tangent. So you take 3 over square root of 7. How big is alpha? I have no idea. Okay, I'm not sure in this picture what the uh, uh, size of alpha is in either degrees or uh, radians. But I do know what the trig ratios are. Okay. All right, I'm going to let y'all try one here on your paper. So it's exactly the same exercise. Okay. Um, suppose that um, you know we have an angle there, beta. And its tangent is five halves. Okay, its tangent is five halves. So uh, sketch a uh, you know a hypothetical right triangle, right? Okay, that uh, uh, beta could be uh, uh, embedded in, and then uh, use that right triangle to find the rest of the trig ratios for beta. So that would be sine, cosine, um, cotangents. Easy here, right? Uh, and then secant and cosecant, right? So same thing we did here, right? Draw a picture with beta, right? And then figure out what the lengths of the sides are, or, or you can imagine what the lengths of the sides are, right? Or you can assume what the lengths of the sides are based on this uh, tangent value, and then calculate the other five missing trig ratios after tangent. Cotangent is easy, right? You don't have to even draw the triangle for this. What's cotangent of beta? Yeah, two over five. That one you know automatically, right? Okay. That's the reciprocal. But if you get others. All right. So let me, I'm going to watch y'all. All right. So you guys at home, right? Try the same thing. Look at this picture. We do the same thing, except slightly different numbers, right? And a different Greek letter here for the angle. It's always helpful to draw a picture. So, uh, 
that They are the great. This is a skill of drawing, uh, drawing one of these hypothetical right triangles. Be surprised how often this skill comes up, okay, in calculus. Um, all right, so, um, uh, but it's really later in calculus that it would be really useful. Um, all right, so let's, um, so we already calculated the cotangent, right? Um, let me draw the picture. So I'm always encouraging, encouraging you to draw pictures of right triangles or draw pictures of angles because that's so helpful. Um, even if you feel like you don't need it, really helpful. Um, in understanding problems. Uh, so mathematicians are not hesitant at all to draw pictures, okay? They do that frequently, and you should get in the habit of doing that too, right? Draw, draw pictures whenever you can. That, this is, look, there's a, there's a clear psychological reason for this. You know, um, um, humans have really good uh, eyesight, okay? You know, I mean, it's not... Like and birds have really great eyesight, right? So it's not on a bird level, but we, amongst animals, humans have pretty good eyesight. So um, dogs don't, but their hearing is great. But our hearing. So um, so our information is um, uh, so we process information visually. Uh, we're used to doing it. Our eyesight is so good. So so it really helps to draw pictures because your brain is just wired to understand things that it perceives visual. Um, all right, so so there's a it's kind of a rough picture of the of the triangle, right? And we know that the um, that the tangent is five over two, but tangent, remember, is opposite over adjacent, right? So in this picture, the opposite of beta is five, and the adjacent is two. And then all you have to do is find the hypotenuse, correct? But that is just the Pythagorean theorem. And uh, what does the hypotenuse come out to be? Yeah, so just apply the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, we proved that. So you know that the Pythagorean theorem is correct, right? So you know that square root of 29, you have 100% confidence in that square root of 29 is the length of that hypotenuse, correct? And now we just use that in our, in our other trig ratios, right? So sine of beta is um, opposite over hypotenuse, right? So an awkward value, 5 over the square root of 29, but that's it. Cosine of beta is um, adjacent, right? So two over square root of 29. We already know tangent, we already know cotangent. And now we just have to do the other two, right? So cosecant of beta, that is the reciprocal of the sine. So we have square root of 29 over five. And then the last one is secant of beta but that's the reciprocal of cosine. So that's square root of 29, two. All right, so, all right, so you know your calculators have 
sine, cosine, and tangent, right, on them. And then just by using the reciprocal key on your calculator, the one over X key on your calculator, you can then calculate uh, the other three trig ratios, right? The cosecant, secant, and the cotangent. So you can compute, um, you can compute uh, uh, all these trig ratios with your calculator. And from in most cases, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the calculator to compute trig ratios for angles. Okay. Um, but there are, uh, uh, again, uh, as we've been mentioning, right, there are angles that occur frequently, right? These are called the special angles like pi over six, pi over three, pi over four, pi over two. So for the special angles, um, uh, uh, their uh, trig ratios you want to memorize, okay? Because these angles are going to occur frequently and uh, you don't want to be always relying on a calculator to compute the uh, trig ratios for these special angles. Want that committed to memory so you can uh, uh, write those down quickly. All right. So again, in your calculus class, your, um, your instructor is going to assume that you will know the trig ratios, especially sine and cosine. All right. Especially kind of sine and cosine. Maybe so not, not so much tangent and the reciprocal trig ratios, but the sine and cosine, your calculus instructor is going to assume that you know these by memory for special angles like pi over six, pi over three. Uh, pi over four, pi over two. All right. So, um, so you you need to work on committing those uh, 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 those the, the trig ratios for those special angles to memory. I'm going to help you with that. But um, notice I've got this in bold in the notes. Okay. So I really cannot emphasize this enough. All right. For the special angles, okay, need to know their trig ratios. Need to have memorized those. Okay. Um, and I'll show you how it's easy to learn those. But let me show you now um, a couple of these. They're easy to calculate. So, um, but, but I'm just going to show you the calculations once, and then, and then you need to just memorize them. So let's start with pi over 4, such an easy angle, right? So. Um, Pi over four, which is how many in degrees? Yeah, it's 45 degrees, right? Okay, so uh, let me show you how we can find the trig ratios for pi over four, um, 45 degrees. Uh, well, uh, so here's a picture of pi over four, but, uh, but we want pi over four embedded in a right triangle, right? So let me, let me extend this picture to a right triangle. But you know, uh, uh, pi over four is 45 degrees, right? So, so this line is a 45 degree line, 45 degree line. 45 degree line means that the X coordinate and the Y coordinate on the line are the same, okay, right? So this line goes through the point one, one, it goes through the point two, two, it goes through the point three, three, four, four, et cetera, all right? So if we assume that this is X equals three, right, okay, then, the y coordinate for this point on this 45 degree line is also going to be three. In other words, um, if I draw this point at x equal three, the y coordinate is also three. So let's do that, and let me draw a uh, let me draw a right triangle here. Then. All right. So I just drop a vertical line down here, get a right triangle. So of course, what's the length of these sides? What's the length of this vertical side? What's this y coordinate? Three. So the length of this side is three, right? And of course, what's the length of this horizontal side? Three, right? Okay. Because I did that on purpose, right? I, I drew that vertical line at x equals three. But because this, uh, this is a 45 degree angle, right? Okay. We know this length and this length are the same. So that makes it really easy now to compute the trig ratios, right? So what is the sign of pi over four or 45 degrees. Oh, I have to compute this. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to compute this hypotenuse first, right? So what is the length of that hypotenuse? So we have three squared plus three squared equal the hypotenuse squared, right? So it looks like C squared is, how much is this, 18? Yeah, so C is the square root of 18. Um, if you simplify that by hand a little bit, 
you can write that as three times the square root of two. Uh, because 18 is nine times two, and you can extract the square root of nine. So you could write this as three times the square root of two. But 18 isn't a perfect square, so you cannot completely simplify. All right, now let's do it. So sine of pi over four is the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So you have three over three times the square root of two, and the threes divide out, and you get what? One over square root of two, which is always, usually, uh, always written in this form, square root of two over two. One over the square root of two is the same as the square root of two over two. So there it is. The sine of pi over four is square root of two over two, okay? which is the same as one over square root of two, but we usually express it as square root of two over two. Oh, cosine then? Same thing, right, okay? That's gonna be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? But the adjacent is the same as the opposite. So when you compute the cosine, you'll get the same value, square root of two over two. Uh, tangent is really easy. So what's tangent? One. So tangent of pi over four, that one's so easy to remember. That's just one. Now, the other ones are, um, uh, 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 once you remember sine, cosine, and tangent, then the other ones are easy to discover, right? So what's the cosecant of pi over four? Or four? Remember, that's the reciprocal of what? The sine. Well, so... We wrote sine as square root of two over two, but remember that's the same as one over the square root of two. And if you take the reciprocal of one over the square root of two, what do you get? Square root of two. So cosecant is a power of four is square root of two. What's secant then a power of four? Same thing, square root of two. And what's cotangent of pi over four? One, right. Same uh, uh, as tangent. So the ones you really want to try to commit to memory, though, are not these three. Those are less important. It would be these, okay? So try to remember, well, not try, I'm actually commanding you. Remember sine of pi over four, square root of two over two. Cosine pi over four, square root of two over two. Tangent, just one, okay? Now, a little bit later on, I'll show you the, a shortcut for remembering the tangent because it's related to sine and cosine. So what you really have to actually remember is sine and cosine, okay? So sine of power of four is square root of two over two, cosine of power square root of two over two. Well, that's our first, uh, there's our first special angle, pi over four, okay? And sine and cosine there and tangent, pretty easy to remember, right? Because uh, the sine and cosine are the same and the tangent is so simple. Let's see, what's our next, next special angle? Uh, aren't, isn't it pi over six and pi over three, right? Okay, so um, those are, uh, a pi over six is what in degrees? 30, and uh, what's 60 in um, pi over three, right? So now we want to figure out hmm, what sine, cosine, tangent of 60 and 30. That's a little bit tougher. <laughs> all right, so we'll have to save that one for next time, all right? But I'm going to show you uh, uh, how to derive the sine and cosine of uh, uh, and tangent of 30 and 60 but I have to draw a little bit more complicated picture. So we need to discuss uh, that picture. You won't have to use that picture again. This is just for the first time. Once we have calculated the sine and cosine of 30 and 60, then you're just gonna memorize it, all right? Um, so this is just a one-time thing uh, to show you what those special values are, okay? Um, all right, well, we're just on time. So uh, we're finished.
Hope everyone out there in Zoom world is okay. Y'all there? Still? Yeah. So someone's there. Okay. Her name yeah. is still there. All right. All right, guys. Uh, so so we're done for today. I'm going to stop the tape. And remember, you got a homework due when? Saturday. Yay. Okay. All right. So get that one done. And then I'll see you guys on Monday.